Thanks for joining us at 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Piaki. Heart disease is the number one killer in both the U.S. and the world. And since February is American Heart Month, photojournalist Joe Swanson sat down with 9 News medical expert Dr. Pyle Coley to speak about the reduction of heart disease, tools to monitor your heart health, and things to know about heart disease. Here's Dr. Pyle Coley. You know, people think about car accidents, they think about gun violence, but heart disease remains the number one killer, men and women, in the U.S. and across the world, and it has so for decades. And so heart disease is really the biggest threat to our life, our longevity, and the types of heart disease that can manifest, cardiac arrest and stroke and heart attacks, they can really change the quality of your life, not just the quantity of it. You know, three things that everybody should know about heart disease today in 2023. Number one, the CDC tells us that 80% of heart attacks and strokes are preventable with risk factor management. So this is something that we have in our control. Number two, the American Heart Association and others have released data that anyone who's had COVID, these COVID survivors, are at increased risk of heart disease moving forward. And we think this is a result of direct and indirect effects of the pandemic. So even if you haven't had the infection yourself, you could be at increased risk just to, due to some of the socioeconomic impacts. So number three, we're looking at the heart disease curve of COVID that lies ahead of us. And we all need to work to try to flatten it because we've gotten over the pandemic, we've gotten our lives back to normal, but heart disease and the collateral damage that's been caused by COVID on our heart risk continues to remain. So we all need to work to sort of counteract that by working on preventive measures. It's really important to go looking for risk factors because the thing about heart disease is that it doesn't really declare itself until it's almost too late. So, you know, high blood pressure, for example, is called the silent killer because your blood pressure goes up and up and up in your blood vessels and you may not even realize it. Similarly, your sugar, it can sneak up on you and it really won't manifest with symptoms until it's too late. So you really, in, in the case of heart disease, want to go looking for trouble. And the way to do that is really to sort of check, you know, your blood pressure, check your blood sugar, get your screening tests and follow what the American Heart Association calls life's essential eight. These are eight things that if you do, you can dramatically reduce your risk of having heart disease or, you know, ever dying from a heart attack. You know, I think there's a whole lot of things that you should and shouldn't do. So, you know, we talk often about diet, which I always say food is the best first medicine. So you want every single plate to look the same. And that means half should be fruits and vegetables. So half of your plate, regardless of its breakfast, lunch, or dinner. A quarter should be lean protein, like chicken or fish or tofu. And then a quarter should be a whole grain, like quinoa or brown rice. And if you follow that, that's a really nice way with not too many portions, lots of colors on your plate to really get good nutrition. You wanna shoot for about seven to nine hours of sleep a night, according to the American Heart Association for most adults, which can be a challenge challenge as well during the week. You want to really limit how much alcohol you're drinking. And previously, the American Heart Association used to say about two drinks a day for men and about one drink a day or less for women. But now there are new guidelines out of Canada and other countries that are really making us think it should be less than two drinks a week for most people. So really try to limit that and limit especially how many you're drinking in one setting. So the weekend warriors where you don't drink at all during the week and then go out and have four or five drinks on the weekend, that's actually giving a higher dose of alcohol to your heart, to your liver, to your stomach, to all of your organs as well. And, and so, you know, those are kind of the lifestyle things you can do. The exercise, you want to get about 30 minutes of moderate intensity. So that means jogging, running, dancing, biking, uh, and you want to exercise at such a pace that if somebody was standing next to you, you could talk to them in a few short sentences. Um, if you can't get a word out, you're hitting it too hard. And if you're able to chat and chat and chat, then you need to turn up the intensity a little bit. So those are sort of lifestyle things that we can do. And then there's genetics and age, which we can't modify. So in order to really counteract the effects of those, we need to stay on top of our blood pressure, our blood sugar, our blood cholesterol, really check our numbers, know our numbers, so that the minute that they start to go up, we can start to intervene. So I like to call that the ABCs of cardiovascular prevention. So A stands for age. There's not much you can do about that, but it tells you when you should get your screenings. And you're never too young to start getting those screenings. B stands for blood pressure. So your blood pressure, that top number should be less than 120 and the bottom number less than 80. Keep an eye on your sodium intake. Make sure you check it regularly. The minute it starts to creep up, 
it's time to talk to your doctor about it. C stands for cholesterol in cigarettes. So you want to make sure your good cholesterol is high, your bad cholesterol is low, and you're, you're limiting how much saturated fat you're eating in your diet. Stay off those cigarettes. And I'm talking about tobacco, I'm talking about vaping, and I'm talking about marijuana as well, because any kind of smoke can be irritating to the linings. D stands for diabetes, which is blood sugar. So make sure you get screened to check whether or not your blood sugar is starting to run up with a test called hemoglobin A1C. It's a blood test. And then E stands for exercise. So 30 minutes, five days a week. You can take the weekends off if you'd like, but get that heart rate up for at least 30 minutes where you're doing moderate intensity exercise. Your, your blood pressure is two numbers. So the top number is the systolic blood pressure. That's the blood pressure when your heart squeezes. The bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure. That's the blood pressure inside your arteries when your heart relaxes. And you really wanna burn the number into your brain where it should be. So it should be less than 120 over 80. And that means both the top number and the bottom number should be less. Now if either of those is increased, it can start to increase your risk of heart disease. If you go above 130 for the top number and 80 for the bottom number, your doctor may think about starting medication at that point. You think about your heart rate, what is that? That is how much work your heart muscle is doing, how many times your, your muscle is beating. And so if you have very high heart rates, that can be really concerning because your muscle is doing too much work. So really the average sort of heart rate for more, most people should be about 70 to 80. Now if you run 90 or 100, you may actually want to go talk to your doctor because that could be a sign of some underlying illness like a thyroid problem or an infection or you know something else going on. Or it could mean that there's something wrong with the electrical system of your heart where your heart rate tends to run too high. Now people also ask what about too low heart rates? In general, if you're very athletic, a low heart rate is actually a sign of cardiovascular health because it means that your heart actually has to do less work. It has to beat fewer times a minute in order to create the same cardiac output as somebody else. But as we get older, our heart rates can be low not because we're athletic, but actually because the electrical system is failing. The pacemaker of the heart, which is called the sinus node, starts to get calcium deposits and starts to sort of misbehave. And so if you're very old and you have a low heart rate, it can be a sign that your electrical system might not be working. And it can manifest itself with inability to sort of do exercise, go up a flight of stairs, carry something heavy. You sort of you know, get tired or short of breath when you try to exert yourself. The American Heart Association has recommended a couple of screening tests for people over the age of 40 or people who have a family history of heart disease. These are easy to get tests. One is called a heart scan or a calcium score. Uh, go and get one because it'll tell you whether you already have blockages in your arteries and can really guide your management. And the second test is a blood test called a lipoprotein A. That's a genetic marker of risk. Uh, and 20% of us are walking around with elevated lipoprotein A's. And if we know that early in our life, in our 30s and 40s, even in our 50s, it can dramatically change the way your doctor manages you, which will really have an impact on whether or not you ever develop heart disease later in life.